In this uh, short exercise, we're just going to take a look at the uh, at the color picker. You can see I've got a composite already open, um, and I'm going to add a constant to this. So I'm just going to come up here and choose a constant. You can see its default is black, and I'm just going to hit the number two there just to get up to the same viewer, so I can quickly just toggle here using the one and two buttons between the uh, between the two views. So this uh, this is a constant, and you can see that this is already opened up in the uh, in the in the properties and you can see that we've got some options up here now I want to I'm, I'm going to focus on the, on the constant it's a very simple node but you can see that it has some color selection tools up here uh, there are essentially three of them I mean I won't really deal with the animation uh, we have this pipette which is good for sampling values for example in a background plate and then color matching the foreground to match or maybe even just parts of the full of uh, the, the background we will take a look at that later and then we also have this four channel option which are uh, which we can um, which we can use to access the different colors uh, uh, the different three channels in of the image separately and then we have our color picker and it's the color picker that gives us a lot of control over over our image and this is what we're going to look at in detail now so I'm going to open this color picker first of all I'm just going to click it just to show you what happens I'm working in Nuke 8 here and you can see that uh, that that's uh, not the same as what would happen in Nuke 7 um, because in Nuke 8 they actually brought the uh, they brought the controls of the color wheel actually into the node rather than it appearing as a pop-up so I'll just turn that off for now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to control click and what this does, if I bring this into the viewing area, this opens up the color picker in the way that you'd expect to see it happen in Nuke 7. Now if you've been following this, yours might not look like this, yours might look say for example more like this and the reason, uh, the reason why is because uh, the color picker actually has uh, three different color spaces as the RGB, the HSV and the TMI. Uh, we're going to come and have a quick look at all those but for now I'm just going to switch it into the RGB view. This is a, a view that's familiar to, to most people. Um, and while I'm in this view it'll help me to take a look at some of the controls that we have within the interface and these are identical ir irrespective of the color space that we're, we're actually in. So we'll start with the sliders. So these are pretty familiar. You you'll be aware that you can uh, that you can click and just drag these these sliders. Um, you can also just move to a different point in the uh, in the slider bar and click, and it will jump to that particular position. Um, what else can we do in here? We can hard type a value. So uh, this is a linear uh, floating point. So the values are between zero and one. Uh, so for example, I could type in, hard type there 0 0.5 and hit return. Uh, 0 0.2 or 3 and hit return and you can see that by hard typing these values in this uh, this changes the position of the sliders relative to their uh, or, the, or the points relative to their slider and it also makes changes within this color wheel that we'll come on to in a second we can also make fine adjustments by uh, by placing our cursor to the left of an integer or should I say a numeric value inside here uh, I'll just slip it in there and then using the up and down arrows to uh, to move that around. You can see the dynamic effect that that's having inside that particular slider and also in the color wheel and if I want even more fine detail I can actually move to the right of the image and then we're, we're actually working in a, another decimal point up and, and that's giving me even finer control so I can get very very refined color changes uh, within this um, within this particular interface. Okay so let's take a look at this bar on the right so this actually controls the density of the alpha. Um, so just to show this, if I just um, I'll just pop this over the top here, and I'll switch into the alpha channel. And you can see that that's black. And you can see that if I slide up here, it makes absolutely no difference. Okay. So why is this? The reason why is because the constant by default doesn't come in with the alpha enabled. We have to enable that. I'll just drag this out so we can see. You can see that it's set to the RGB, but the alpha channel is currently turned off. So to enable the alpha channel in the constant, we would have to make the selection and choose the RGB alpha. You can see that that's now that's now checked, and you can see immediately now that we have a change inside the the viewer. So we're looking at the alpha channel here, and you can see that I can dial up and dial down the density of the alpha channel from this panel now, from this slider now. 
So I'll leave this. Uh, I'll leave this back at uh, pure black, and we'll uh, and we'll just narrow down this uh, this swatches panel again and go back to RGB. Okay. Now this gives me the opportunity to sort of point out these little chaps up in the top left-hand corner of the uh, of the panel. Uh, something else I should point out at this stage is that we do actually we are actually able to change the size and the shape of this panel in which case the the terms that I'm using like up in the top left of the panel might be might be slightly different depending on how you've got your setup but uh, but let's just assume that you've got it like this we're, we're referring to these uh, these particular uh, swatches up in this top left hand corner uh, and I just wanted to explain a little bit about what they uh, what they represent so essentially this this swatch on the right hand side um, is is basically the color the color that you started with whereas the color on the left is the is the actual color that you've currently got selected so basically the sum of these um, of these sliders and you notice that if I make a change we get this little overlay pops over while ever my mouse is down I'll get we'll get this little overlay and what that what that overlay is actually is doing is it's showing us the last selected color um, but you can see that the new color is actually dynamically changing in the left side of the swatch underneath so it gives us the opportunity to not just to see the original color and the currently selected color but also the last selected color and obviously when we release that then that becomes a wet uh, goes away and now it, this becomes our our uh, newly selected color so if I make another change now this color would would actually appear in that in that overlay and I could make my change. So this is good for making a very subtle comparison uh, adjustment between uh, between a selected color and um, and and a slight revision of it. You can see there that all that's doing is just pinking up that original color, and I can see it in that swatch. Once released, that becomes the new active selected color. Okay, so we can now take a look at the color wheels. There are actually. Um, there are actually two variations. Uh, I suppose, technically speaking, there's three variations because we can actually uh, we can actually turn it off altogether. But for now, I'm just going to focus on this one. This is the default uh, variation of, of the color wheel, or the default state of the color wheel. Uh, there's similarities and slight differences between them. So you can see that we've got essentially two controls. We've got this triangle on the outer, and then we've got this circle on the inner. So if I drag this this circle one there, you can see that I can pull it I can pull it around the wheel and I can also pull it in and out from the center of the wheel. So what this is effectively doing is it's enabling us to change the hue by moving around the wheel and the saturation by moving in and out from the center. Obviously, the closer we go to the center, the more desaturated. The more we come to the outer edge, the more saturated it becomes. We have this triangle on the outer which allows us to move around and adjust saturation only so I can come over here for example into the into the sort of the blue tones and you can see that the uh, the, the circular slider that I was just controlling goes along for the ride it, but uh, but it's not uh, but it's not making any adjustment to it I can't make any a, a separate adjustment to that this controls the hue only um I can control the uh, the saturation by itself by holding I believe it's holding down shift and you can see that puts that little, that little line on there and now what happens is while the shift key is down I can desaturate and increase the saturation but you can see that if I pull the if I pull my cursor up and down I can't actually change that hue so that gives me a very precise way once I've made my selection on my hue a very precise way then of just increasing and reducing the saturation without running the risk of adjusting my hue Okay, so let's move to the other view. This is a view that, for people using Photoshop, this will look quite familiar. Again, it's got very distinct similarities. We've got a triangular slider around the uh, around the outside, which allows us to control just the hue of the of the image. I'll actually just move into the center there, so we can see that happening. So that's affecting just the hue, and then we've got this uh, the, we've got this control again on the inside, and again just by dragging it around, I can make various controls. Um, this works slightly differently in the sense that by moving the uh, moving the 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 uh, circle from left to right increases and reduces the saturation, and moving up and down 
increases and reduces the brightness so we've actually got an extra tolerance within this if we want to control and constrain just on one of those properties we can hold down shift and you can see now that by holding down shift that constrains the value to the uh, to the brightness so we just get the vertical movement and we can't no matter whether we move across we can't actually change the saturation if we release that now and go to the and, and hold down control you can see that we can now increase the, and, and reduce the saturation but you can see that we don't we're not able to dynamically adjust the brightness at the same time so again fine controls from this particular uh, state okay so I'll just slip that back to the uh, to, to the default view and we'll just take a little bit more of a look at these um, at these uh, st these these states these slider uh, these, these slider color spaces so at the moment we're in the RGB this is a very familiar uh, red green and blue configuration we've already discussed the alpha and that's the same in all the uh, in all the color uh, the color spaces so the red obviously allows us to control the red channels value uh, without affecting the green or the blue and the green similarly and the blue similarly and obviously by controlling all three together then we control the sort of the, the global image uh, if I just turn that, turn the HSV on and the RGB off, then we can see the U, the saturation, and the value. So the U allows us to control just the U. You can see the effect that that's having on the color wheel. So that's controlling just the U of the image. Um, and again, the saturation allows us to control, to desaturate, and increase the saturation of the image and you can see again the what what that's doing on the color wheel that's the control that we've already seen uh, in the color wheel one mistake that you can easily make on here is you could have your saturation down at the bottom here and then you can be pulling this around but you're seeing no no evidence of it in your viewer and that's because if it's completely desaturated it doesn't matter what the u is it's a desaturated image it will just appear as grayscale so always make sure that you put at least some saturation on before you start to adjust the hue otherwise you just won't see it and then we have the value, which is uh, there's a there's a there's an HSI and an HSV color space um, in 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 different softwares. Uh, v represents value, and all it essentially means is a is a is a way of con calculating mathematically calculating the brightness of the image. So if for now we just assume this is controlling the brightness, so we have the U, the saturation, and the brightness of the image, then this is what we would use then to control the brightness of the image. Okay, so I'll turn on the TMI and turn off the HSV and we'll take a look at this. Now this actually applies um, a paradigm which is familiar to people that use film. It essentially working on the principle of color temperature. So the T, which represents the temperature slider, lets you control the apparent color temperature by inversely affecting the red or the blue values. This is of course assuming that you're processing an RGBA layer. So when we're working with directors that um, or, or DOPs that traditionally work with uh, with film stock, um, they, for example, would ask you to warm the image by adding warmer yellow tones, and they would ask you to cool the image by adding cooler tones. Um, sometimes the effect of this as a as a variation on the magenta, and so we may want to make a, a, a commensurate uh, adjustment to the to the magenta setting in order to compensate for any variations that are caused by warming or cooling the image and then the intensity is essentially uh, allows us to simultaneously control the red green and blue value channels through the intensity and to increase the value of all channels by the same amount we would just drag that up and that would have the same effect across all channels Okay, so I said at the beginning that we would take a look at the eyedropper, so we'll we'll take a look at that. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to set this to the HSV settings and close it down, and we'll take a look at the eyedropper. Um, before we do that, I'll just hit the one key just to switch over to this uh, to this Marcy image, and we'll take a look at what we can do with the with the eyedropper tool. So this is essentially this little swatch icon, um, which when we select we get this little eyedropper pipette and what this basically allows us to do is make a selection from from within the image so for example if I just hold down shift and control and just drag a marquee into this area we can see that the that the color swatch 
uh, effectively takes that color the average of all the pixels within that sort of bounding box and it dumps that into the constant and the co constant becomes that color so similarly if I wanted to do the same on this gray swatch you would see that my color my, my color of my constant matches that so this is a great way of making a selection um, say for example from a background and then applying it to a foreground so great for what we might traditionally call color matching um, just a slight uh, a variation on this I just wanted to show you that we could so let's say for example we wanted to take a selection of skin tones maybe say from this shoulder so we'll take some skin tones from that shoulder again our constant this color now is 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 an average of all the pixels within that area uh, but let's say that I wanted to make a slight change to it let's say that I want to maybe to sort of use that color but I wanted a slightly more saturated and slightly darker version of that so what I could now do is I could now come to my color wheel you can see that that color has, has, has been taken into the color wheel um, Again, I'm forgetting that I'm in New Kate, so I'll just control click that so that we're seeing our swatch as we as we might expect. So now, for example, we can just increase the the saturation slightly of that, and maybe just darken it down a little bit, and you can see that we're getting a slightly different variation of that colour. If I just if I just wiggle it around in there, you can see that we're getting a slightly different variation of that in there. So we would we would essentially use the uh, use the color picker to make an initial selection but then we can actually use that to um, to add a, a variation of it okay so that's the basic gist of the color pickers the eyedropper uh, the color the color wheel etc I just I should just just point out that when we make a selection with the pipette it's always good practice just to hit it again and close it off uh, and the reason why we would do that is that while ever it's active in this state we could accidentally overwrite our selection so just by turning it off there means that it doesn't matter where we click now I'm control clicking in my image you can see that I can't accidentally uh, alter my selection okay that's the end of this exercise I hope you found that useful